Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. At this point, I don't even know what day of the week it is, but all I know is I've got another ETH game lined up for you guys. This week, I am playing Carador, and I keep a hand with Planes, Scavenger News, Swamp, Windswept Heath, Eidolon of the Rhetoric, Hermit Druid, and Beast Within. Emily is back, and she's playing her Farika deck, and keeps Primeval Bounty, Baloth Null, Verderan Enchantress, Creeping Dread, Borderland Explorer, Oath of Nyssa, and Jungle Hollow. Harry is playing his Kiki Jiki deck, and keeps a hand with Two Mountains, Burning Sun's Avatar, Combat Celebrant, Fanatic of Mogus, Ramunap Ruins, and Hedron Archive. And lastly, Sean is playing Progenitus, and keeps a hand with Isaac Guildgate, Crucible of Worlds, Rakdos Guildgate, Hour of Promise, Mina and Den, Knight of the Reliquary, and Exotic Orchard. Sean wins the die roll and starts us off. Sean begins the game by playing a tapped Rakdos Guildgate and passes. Emily also plays a tap land, and Jungle Hollow comes in, gaining her one life. I play a Windswept Heath, cracking it and taking one to go and find something with a forest, an overgrown tomb, but I have it come to play tapped. While I find it though, I pass to Harry. Harry plays a mountain and passes turn. Sean plays a tapped Is It Guildgate and passes. Emily plays Oath of Nyssa, looking at her top three. She keeps a swamp and plays it before passing turn. I play a swamp and I cast Hermit Druid. Harry plays a mountain and passes turn. Sean plays a tapped Gruel Guildgate and also passes. Emily plays a Swamp and casts Borderland Explorer. We all get the option to discard a card, and we all do so and go and grab a basic and put it to our hand. On my upkeep, I activate Hermit Druid and go pretty deep into my deck until I hit a forest. I went a bit too deep for my own comfort, and I then dredge back the recently milled life from the loam and dredge three more cards. I play a forest and cast life to bring back Bloodstained Mire, Windswept Heath, and Diamond Valley. I then discard a plains and a forest and pass turn. Harry plays Raminap Ruins and passes to Sean. Sean plays a plains and casts a Knight of the Reliquary before passing turn. Emily plays a forest and casts Animate Dead, fancying my Elish Norn in my graveyard. The Knight and the Hermit Druid die as a result, and Emily moves to combat and swings the Explorer, who now hits 5 power, at Harry for 5. I replay the Windswept Heath for my land for turn and crack it taking 1 to go and find Scrubland. I then cast Carador, but have no one drops to cast, and I pass my turn. Harry plays a mountain, and casts Hedron Archive. Sean plays Exotic Orchard, and then casts Hour of Promise. He decides to grab Bajuka Bog, and wanting to be fair, Sean decides to roll a die. He assigns 1 through 20 to me, and as luck would have it, he hits one of those numbers, and I exile my graveyard. Sean also grabs Mystifying Maze, and passes turn. Emily plays Haunted of Night's Reach in her main phase, and moves to combat. She swings the Explorer at me for 5, which I take, and passes to me. I play a Bloodstained Mire for my land for turn, and sacrifice it to find a Swamp. I then swing Carador at Sean and deal 1 commander damage, mostly as a message and less for the damage, and then pass to Harry. Harry plays a Mountain and casts Sunburn's Invocation. Sean casts Mina and Den, and plays a Swamp and then a Forest before passing turn. Emily rolls to see who discards from the Honden, and the dice chooses Sean, who dumps Rune Ghost. Emily then casts Grim Guardian, and all of her opponents lose one life. Moving to combat, she swings the Explorer at Harry again for 5 damage. For my turn, I play a Forest, and I cast Court of Calling, where X is 3. I grab Harmonic Sliver to blow up Emily's Animate Dead, and bring Elish Norn back to my graveyard. Harry casts an Inferno Titan in his main phase, and reveals the top 6 cards. He picks a Braid, and has it deal 3 to Emily's Grim Guardian. The Inferno Titan then enters, and deals 1 to the Explorer, 1 to the Guardian, and 1 to Emily. Sean plays a Crucible of Worlds so that he can play a land for turn from his graveyard. He plays a Sun Scorched Desert from his graveyard, and has it come into play dealing 1 damage to me. Moving to combat, he swings Mina and Den at Emily, and passes turn. Emily has me discard on her upkeep, and I pitch Scavenging Ooze. She then plays a Polluted Mire tapped, and casts Verderan Enchantress after playing her land. She then casts Death's Approach on Carador, which isn't enough to kill him, but it does make him a 0-1. Emily also gets to draw a card thanks to her Enchantress, and she passes turn. I play a Canopy Vista for my land for turn, and cast Elish Norn from my graveyard. Moving to combat, I swing Carador at Sean, and he takes 3, and with nothing else, I pass to Harry. Harry casts a Filigree Familiar, and the Invocation trigger reveals 3 off the top. 
He casts Commander Sphere for free, and upon entering, the familiar dies from Elish Norn, giving Harry three life and a card draw. Harry then casts Mimic Vat, and casts Sting Scourger from his revealed cards from the Sunbird Invocation. He targets Elish Norn, but the Sting Scourger still dies. Harry has it get imprinted by the Mimic Vat while I bounce my Praetor to my hand. Harry then moves to combat, swinging the Inferno Titan at Emily for 6, but has the Inferno Titan trigger deal 2 to Caridor, killing him, and 1 to me. Sean casts Decree of Pain in his main phase, killing 2 creatures and drawing 2 cards. He then passes to Emily. Emily has me discard again, and I dump Machaeus the Unhallowed. She then casts Farika and passes to me. I play a Diamond Valley for my turn, and cast a Protean Hulk before passing to Harry. Harry casts a Tuk Tuk Scrapper in his main phase, and resolves his Invocation Trigger. He decides to cast Faithless Looting for free, and discards Dual Caster Mage and a Mountain. The Scrapper then enters the battlefield, and destroys Sean's Crucible. Harry then casts Thornbite Staff, and passes turn. Sean casts a Crackling Perimeter in his main phase, and counts up his gates, four of them, before passing. At the end of Sean's turn, Emily exiles my Harmonic Sliver with Farika, giving me a green and black Death Touch Enchantment Snake. On her upkeep, Emily is Harry discard a card this time, and he bins Skirk Prospector. Emily then casts Delirium Skeins to force everyone to discard three cards. With nothing else, she passes. I draw for my turn and examine my graveyard. I cast Reanimate, targeting Sun Titan, but Farika exiles it with a spell in the stack, and I get another snake token instead. Moving to combat, I swing the Protean Hulk at Harry, who after the Declare Attacker steps, taps his Mimic Vat to put out a copy of the Sting Scourger, targeting my Hulk. I respond to the targeting by casting Beast Within the Mimic Vat, and with the spell resolving, I then sacrifice the Protean Hulk, gaining 6 life, and go and find Bane of Progress. Harry sacrifices his Commander Sphere to draw a card while the trigger of Bane of Progress is on the stack, and Sean taps 4 gates to deal 4 to each of his opponents. Bane of Progress then wipes the board of enchantments and artifacts, and ends up with 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and I pass to Harry. Harry plays an Abbot of Carol Keep, and reveals Panharmonicon off the top. Well dang it. Harry then casts it, and passes turn. Sean plays a Simic Guildgate, and checks to see if he can cast Progenitus. But he can't, so he passes. Emily plays a Slippery Karst, and passes turn. For my turn, I recast Caridor in my main phase, although sadly not for only one white, green, and black like I'm used to. I move to combat, and I swing the bane at Harry, who chumps with his token vigorously. Harry casts Kiki Jiki, and activates his ability to copy the Abbot of Carol Keep. He exiles a mountain and a fire diamond off the top for the two triggers from Panharmonicon. He plays the mountain, and casts the fire diamond, which triggers prowess on both copies of his Abbot. He swings the token copy at Emily for three, and passes turn. Sean draws, and passes turn. Emily plays a forest, and casts Baloth Null. She brings back her Enchantress, and the Grim Guardian. For my turn, I start off by recasting Protean Hulk from my graveyard, and I play a Strip Mine. Moving to combat, I swing the Bane at Sean, who responds by activating Mystifying Maze on my Bane of Progress. This exiles the Bane, who will return at the next end step, and I move to my next end step, and the Bane comes back, blowing up Harry's Fire Diamond and Panharmonicon in a sweet little team-up action from me and Sean. Harry draws for turn, and activates Kiki on the Abbot again, exiling Myriad Landscape, which he plays as his land for turn. Harry then casts Lightning Greaves, and puts them onto Kiki. He then casts a thematic compass, and this triggers prowess. He swings his token copy at Sean for three, and moves to his end step, flipping the compass to reveal spires of Orazka. Sean casts Creeping Renaissance in his main phase, naming creatures, and returns four creatures to his hands. He then recasts Knight of Reliquary, and then passes turn. Emily plays a Swamp, and recasts her Enchantress. She then brings back Grim Guardian, drawing from the Enchantress, and deals one to all of her opponents. I cast an Eldamari's Call in my main phase, and I search for a card, and reveal Sidisi, Undead Vizier. I then cast Sidisi, and sacrifice the Bane to go and tutor for another card, and pass to Harry. Harry draws for turn, and activates Kiki once more on the Abbot. He exiles Wormcoil Engine, and casts it before passing turn. Sean plays a Mountain, and begins to see if he can cast Progenitus. He's got the mana, and brings up the King of Dragons. Sean then taps the knight, sacrificing a plains to go and find Golgari Guildgate. At the end of his turn, Emily exiles her Borderland Explorer, gaining an enchantment snake, which triggers her Grim Guardian to deal one to all of her opponents. In her main phase, Emily casts Ulfenwald Mysteries, drawing a card on cast and dealing one to everyone as it enters. She then plays a swamp and casts Brain Maggot, choosing Sean. She takes Mina and Den, and then albeit out of order, draws and has everyone lose one life. Knowing fully well that she's going to exile it, but not wanting to have it just sit around for the rest of the game, I sacrifice my Protean Hulk to the Diamond Valley again, gaining 6 life and going to my library to find some goodies. With the search trigger on the stack, Emily exiles the Protean Hulk and gives me another enchantment snake. 
and I grab Mind Slicer and Apprentice Necromancer, and with nothing else, we move to my turn. During my first main phase, I cast Grey Merchant of Ashfidel, where my devotion to black is 8, and everyone gets drained for 8 while I gain 24 life. I then cast Safi Eric's Daughter, and I pass to Harry. Harry activates the Myriad Landscape at the end of my turn to go and find two mountains. Harry casts Hashtag Sad Solemn to find a mountain in his main phase, and drops Changeling Berserker, Champion the Solemn. Sean casts his Sylvan Library in his main phase, and taps his knife to sacrifice a forest, and finds Maze Abyss. Moving to combat, he swings Progenitus at me for 10 points of commander damage. In his second main phase, Sean casts Ruin Ghost and passes turn. Emily casts the Deadly Designs in her main phase, a highly political card. She draws a card, and we all take one, and she then plays a Swamp, and the table works out who should pay for what to try and kill something on my side. Sean decides to put in 8 mana, while Harry pays for 2, and that's enough for the enchantment to pop, and Emily has it target the Apprentice Necromancer and the Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. I sacrifice the Merchant to Diamond Valley, gaining 4, and Emily devours it with Farika, and then the Necromancer dies. She also exiles the Bane of Progress with Farika, giving me another snake. At the end of Emily's turn, I strip Miner Jungle Hollow to take out her only open green. She taps it in response to exile my Elish Norn. I play a Plains for my turn, and cast Machaeus with Carador in my main phase. Moving to combat, I swing everything I can at Sean, who is seemingly defenseless, with 22 points of damage. Sean taps the Maze of It to take the Mind Slicer out of combat, but still takes 17 points. I then pass to Harry. At the end of my turn, Harry makes a copy of Worm Coil Engine, who will stick around until the next end of turn, and he starts his own turn, drawing a card. Harry then casts Mind Claw Shaman, and picks Sean. He's able to cast Root Grapple, and targets my Diamond Valley. Harry also gets to draw a card because the Changeling Champion also happens to be a Tree Folk in addition to every type. I tap the Diamond Valley to sacrifice Sidisi, gaining 7 life, and she comes back thanks to Undying. Upon re-entering, I exploit one of the poor snakes to go and tutor for a card. Harry then casts Nim Death Mantle and moves to combat, swinging his Worm Quill token at me, which I block with Sidisi. Sean returns from helping a customer, and has also acquired a nice foily Queen Marquesa, Long May She Reign. He activates his library trigger, and chooses the card he wants to draw. He casts a Maelstrom Pulse on Machaeus, and once the zombie priest dies, Sean taps his Rune Ghost to flicker his Bajuka Bog, exiling my graveyard once more. Emily casts Siphon Mind in her main phase, forcing all of her opponents to discard a card, and then draws as many as were discarded. She then draws three cards from it, and delves away five to cast Tasker's Cruelty. Emily then exiles a creature with Farika, and I get another snake token, and she passes turn. I cast Altar of Dementia in my main phase, and I pass. At the end of my turn, Harry has Kiki up to more shenanigans, and makes another Worm Coil Engine token. Harry plays a Mountain in his main phase, and moves to combat, swinging both Worm Coil Engine and the Abbot at me. I put two of the snakes Emily had so generously given to me in front of the Worm Quill Engines, and I sacrifice them to mill myself for two. I then take two from the Abbot, and at the end of his turn, Harry sacrifices his Worm Quill Engine token and gains two more of the smaller Worm Tokens. Sean activates his library again and picks up the most relevant card. He casts Corsair of Crufix and reveals Rampaging Baloth off the top. Sean then flashes back Creepy and Renaissance, naming lands, and returns a forest and a plains to his hand. He then plays a plains and gains one life and then taps to activate Rune Ghost and flickers the Sun Scorched Desert, giving Sean another life and dealing one to me. He then taps the Knight to sacrifice his planes and goes to find a Thespian Stage, gaining one more life. Sean then passes turn. Emily plays a Forest for a turn and casts Growing Rites of Iplamok, drawing a card on cast and dealing one to everyone as it resolves. She then reveals the Ponder-like effect from the Growing Rites and reveals Archetype of Endurance and puts it into her hand. Emily then casts Eidolon of Blossoms, drawing from the Enchantress, dealing one to her opponents, and then drawing a card as it enters. Emily then moves to her end step, and flips Growing Rites into Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. At the end of Emily's turn, I sacrifice the Mind Slicer to the Altar of Dementia to mill myself for four, and have everyone discard their hands. I cast Demonic Tutor in my main phase, and I grab a card. I pay three to cast Peacekeeper, and pass to Harry. Harry, at the end of my turn, taps Kiki Jiki to create another token copy of the Tuk Tuk Scrapper and destroys my Altar of Dementia. Harry untaps for his turn and whips out Combustible Gear Hulk. Not wanting to give Harry the cards and knowing fully well he'll die in combat, Sean opts to have Harry put the three into his graveyard and take the damage. Sean dies as soon as Harry reveals Siege Gang Commander. Harry then passes, and on Harry's unstep, Emily exiles two creatures with Farika to make two enchantment snakes, dealing two to Harry and I, and drawing two cards from the Idol of the Blossoms. In her main phase, Emily exiles Thought Render Lamia with Farika to make another snake, draw a card, and deal one. She then plays Herald of the Pathion and passes. On my upkeep, I pay the cost for the Peacekeeper and then draw and play Forbidden Orchard. 
Harry responds to my end of turn by creating another copy of Combustible Gear Hulk with Kiki Jiki and targets Emily. Emily, against my better judgment, lets Harry draw three. Harry plays Bogart and Hellkite in his main phase, dealing one to the Peacekeeper and four to Emily. He then taps Kiki Jiki and makes another copy of the Hellkite, dealing five to Emily. Moving to combat, he swings at Emily with his token copies of the Combustible and the Hellkite, as well as four worm tokens. She blocks all the worms with her snakes, and the combustible with Brain Maggot, but still takes the hit in the air and drops to one. Harry also gains some life, and then passes turn. At the end of Harry's turn, Emily exiles her Brain Maggot to get another enchantment snake, drawing a card and having Harry and I lose one. Emily draws her turn and plays a Swamp and casts Cryptolith Rites, drawing a card on cast and then again as it enters the battlefield and gaining one life and dealing one life. Emily then casts Shaper's Sanctum, doing the same again, drawing two, gaining one, and dealing one to Harry and I. Emily is undone though and drops our Gothian Enchantress. She then casts Nyx Weather, drawing three cards total, gaining one life and dealing one to Harry and I. She then taps Cradle to float nine green mana, and tapping a swamp casts Fate Unraveler. She draws three cards, gains one life, and deals one to Harry and I again. Emily then casts Vessel of Nascency, drawing another three, gaining one life, and dealing one to each of us. We then see Call the Bloodline hit the field, and again Emily draws three, gaining one, and dealing one. Emily then casts Vernal Bloom, drawing another three, gaining one life, and dealing one to her opponents. Waste Knot then hits the field, cause why not cast a million spells while you can, and she draws three, gains one, and deals another one. Emily then spends her remaining floating mana to sacrifice the vessel to reveal the top four. She keeps a land from them and bins the rest. She then taps some of her creatures to give her mana and exiles Sangromancer to get another enchantment snake, drawing a card and dealing one to us. She then passes turn. For my turn, I draw and lose one life from Fate Unraveler before casting Buried Alive, binning Viscerous here, Recruiter of the Guard, and Karmic Guide. I then cast Karmic Guide with Carador and target to bring out the Viscerous here. Emily responds by exiling it with Farika, and I get Snake instead. Harry draws and loses one, and then activates Kikijiki in his main phase to create a token copy of the Bogart and Hellkite. He has the token deal 5 to Emily, and he moves to combat. Harry swings a bunch of stuff at Emily, most notably the two Bogart and Hellkites. She blocks with her Nyx Weaver, and then taps the Baloth and Weaver for one green and one black to cast Golgari Charm, giving all creatures minus one minus one. Unfortunately, because we're not good at math, this isn't enough to save her. Harry thankfully is able to use Nim's Death Mantle to bring back the Abbot, and exiles Neverenthal's Disc. The unblocked Bogart and Hellkite then connects to Emily and takes her out of the game. For my turn, I respond to my Karmic Guide trigger by sacrificing Safi and then let the Karmic Guide die, who comes back and returns Safi with her. In my main phase, I cast Fauna Shaman, and I then cast Recruiter the Guard from my graveyard to go and find Avon Mind Sensor. I cast it and pass to Harry, giving him a spirit from the Forbidden Orchard. Harry casts Magus of the Wheel in his main phase, and then makes a copy of the Hellkite with Kiki to deal 5 damage to me and swings a token at me, which I chump with Karmic Guide, who I sacrificed Safi to before to bring back, and Safi's brought back with the Karmic Guide returning. He then casts Swiftfoot Boots and passes turn. For my turn, all I can do is play Homeward Path and pass. Harry's turn has him making a copy of the Magus of the Wheel, then he casts Wheel of Fortune. With the spell in the stack, he activates both of the Maguses, which is enough to draw me out of my remaining cards, and Harry wins as I'm no longer able to draw. Game review time. So if you're ever wondering what a two and a half hour game looks like, this is it. I don't even know why I bothered doing it, since most of the comments are probably going to be how I misplayed. Joking aside, there was a lot of graveyard hate, and unfortunately Carador was not a great matchup against Farika. I also went super deep off of one Hermit Druid activation, which is kind of crazy considering I run about 7 or 8 basics, so I didn't think I was going to go that far into my library. I was a little worried for Emily that her deck wasn't going to do very much, as she seems to be cursed that her decks never perform well on camera. But it was super cool to see her go off late game and draw so many cards and almost get back into the game. Sean's Progenitus deck, if I remember correctly, was built by the shop for him, and it's all foiled out because his original deck was stolen. It's a very sentimental deck to him, but it's also really cool because he can win through Maze's End, which is how I thought he was going to win in the end. And then there leaves us with Harry. Harry has quickly become the evil Adam in the shop, wherein we have to kill him first if we really want to have any chance of winning. I have to say, and don't tell Krenko, but I love Kiki Jiki as a goblin commander, and seeing Harry play this deck so well almost makes me want to build one. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta.
This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.